Well, this Tuesday morning for today's health, we have I an ISU athletic trainer, Daryl Finch, here to talk about rehab exercise for common running injuries like shin splints and knee pain. Um, so and we're also going to demonstrate some of these uh, at-home remedies that people can do. Thank you for joining us, Daryl. So first, let's talk about shin splints and knee pain and why these are common occurrences for people who run and exercise. Well, I mean, just with when you're doing something like running where it's a repetitive motion, and especially right now people are training for 5Ks, 10Ks, weather's nicer, taking advantage of that. It's just um, there's a lot of stress that goes through your body, whether it's through your shins or knees, and there might be some muscle weakness that you've developed or some inflexibility, and that can just lead to either the knee or shin or some other type of pain from, the, from running. Okay, and what can people do to prevent this? Because I'm actually, well, I should be training. I'm doing a 5K mud run in May, okay. and I haven't done anything for it. What can people do to prevent getting shin splints and some of those common injuries? Um, one of the best things is just to get a good warm-up in and stretching as well, and then just making sure that you have good arch support in your shoes, um, things like that, making sure you're not going, uh, that you taper your workout so that way you're mm -hmm. really building up so you're not just going out and running a lot and before, if you haven't been training for a while, um, and then just making sure you have good strength, whether it's at your shins and ankle, and then also a um, thing that's overlooked is uh, glute strength because that really controls uh, your femur, or your, thigh, your thigh bone, and that um, can lead to knee instability if you don't oh. have uh, good glute strength. Okay, wonderful. And now going back real fast to the pre-workout workout, warming up, how long should people work out? Because I've heard that a lot, that it's really important to stretch and get that pre-workout in, but how long does that mean? Well, what I usually tell some of my athletes is just you should do some sort of activity where you're starting to sweat first and then go into your stretching and things like that. That's really going to get your core temperature up, get the blood going to your muscles where you can really get a good stretch out of them. Okay. Um, and doing some kind of active warm-up, whether it be just body weight squats and lunges, things like that, really help to get range of motion and, and strength going before you really go into your workout. Okay, wonderful. Well, in the unfortunate uh, scenario that we get shin splints when we work out, show us some, demonstrate some of the, the right. things people can do at home to, to fix this and help ease the All pain. Right. So this is just a foam pad I just brought. So one of the first things is that uh, ankle range of motion might be kind of inhibited from, um, and then the running kind of will help cause the shin splint. So what you can do is any sort of step or stare at home, you can just go on there and then really drive your knee over your toes until you feel your heel start to come off the ground. Oh. And that will really just help with your ankle dorsiflexion and range of motion. Okay. And then the next exercise you can do just standing on the ground or move up to some kind of foam pad is just go stand heel to toe and then go up on your toes and then really slowly come back down so you're really controlling that motion at the ankle and not just going up and dropping okay. back down.